All right, you're with Al, and this is Chronicles of a Not Yet Champion Golfer. Hope everyone's okay, is safe and well. I've said for a while now I was going to try and get some more stuff out during the week. So not just the Tuesday video I've been doing, something a little bit different. It's times like this when you kind of realise how much you miss the game. Not watching it, not playing it. Even just not chatting to the lads about it, which is where we've come up with this series. Me and the Biff are going to do a series called Down the Line. It's me and Paul basically talking over video conference because we're official like that. Get it? Because down the line refers to a golf swing, but also internet based down the line. So very clever that. And this week we're talking, well, we're covering quite a bit about the Masters with it being Masters Week. Who we think might have won the Masters, some of our favourite moments from the Masters. But we're talking about major championships as well, the rescheduling, what Paul thinks about that, how that affects his schedule. We're talking about the majors Paul's played in and the difference in playing a major compared to a regular tournament really a regular tour tournament it's actually really interesting he's got some really good stories which even i enjoy listening to like when he played his first open and i thought i met tony jacklin it turns out i didn't so that was embarrassing it's kind of podcasty so you don't need to watch us you don't want to look at our faces i wouldn't blame you so yeah we, we cover quite a bit really so like i said have it on in the background get a drink let me know what you think if you can comment down below if you like it if you've got any ideas what you want us to talk about please put them down if you haven't subscribed and you want to that'd be great as well and yeah we'll get on with it now and hopefully you enjoy it we're on hey. there he is hi yeah i did speak to you yesterday to be fair on here so yeah, i'm so excited to speak to you again but here we are i don't blame you to be so excited to speak to me to be fair well it's hard at the moment because obviously you know with everything that's going on with me having like you know a sponsor and everything it's hard for me to get all my, my sponsors in oh, at cool. the moment and you know yeah. show my support and all that sort of thing so you know right. it's really quite it is really quite difficult oh, that, that's hot actually oh, that's true hot <laughs> really, really hot that you are an idiot first, go shopping. Oh, good yeah good doubling it up well done oh. yeah oh right the video, of course oh. would you now it's like your dream scenario. Just sat at home, happy as Larry here. Couldn't be happier. I'm going to break the pressure wash, break the pressure washer out later and clean the cars. Couldn't be happier. I should turn that round, really, shouldn't I? So it's bigger. There we go. Right, let's get into this. Anyway. That's full it's egg, haven't I? Yeah, go on. So oh, you have got egg, egg, actual boiled egg. Yeah, <laughs> boiled egg. <laughs> now we're going to be 17. Masters week this week. And... I mean, I've watched, I keep watching all the replays and stuff of everything the, the past 15 years worth of Masters. But obviously, we were going to be watching it this week. We're not now talking about who you reckon would have been, would have been up there, who would have been competing, any of your mates that might have been up there that you've played with, anyone that you think might have shocked it a little bit. I mean, obviously, Tiger winning last year, and I'm always going to say Tiger's going to win it because that's what... I'm just sort of programmed to say Tiger is going to win by 15 shots. If he Do played. you like Tiger Woods? Possibly a little bit, yeah. Yeah. Possibly a little bit. But who do you reckon? Who would you have been your bet this you know, year? You know what? He was just starting to play really good Fleet. Yeah. Tommy Fleetwood obviously just missed out. Bay Hill. Was it Bay Hill? Yeah, Bay Hill. No, Honda. Was that either one just missed Honda. out? Because Tyrrell um, won at Bay Hill. Tyrrell won at Bay Hill, you're right. So far, yeah, Tyrrell's going nicely as well. Yeah. But yeah, I just I just had a feeling the way Tommy was playing. I think he was just starting to come into a bit of form again. His game was looking sharp. I think he would have gone close, really. Yeah. I would like, I would like to have seen it as well. I, I really yeah. would. I think he's I think he'll he'll come close in a few. Big events, proper pressure player, pages. big time player. Oh, class, his yeah. swing, Absolutely. his swing is so. I always think that's why he does so well under that sort of pressure because his swing is so, just doesn't break down. Like his club face control is one of the best out there. Just doesn't seem to hit, doesn't seem to hit that wide shot, does he really? And I think no. when you're playing those sort of golf courses, that control, it's not just lash it round. It's long golf course, but you've got to get it in play. You've got to. Get, Although the fairways, you wouldn't say the fairways are like massively narrow, but you've got to hit certain points in them because of the slopes and everything. I'm talking like I played Augusta. I've never played Augusta. 
But even the if they are wide, you've got to hit it into small spots to get the run and get, you know, like the 13th, you've got to pitch that in the perfect mm. spot, haven't you? Yeah. And like the other side of it, like with his short game and stuff at the moment, it seems like every time I see him on TV, he's chipping in. Anytime Mr. Green chips in. Who's his short game coach? Uh, some guy, Graham Walker. Oh. Whoever he is. If you haven't seen Graham's Twitter, by the way, go on his Twitter. What a short game he's got. Graham, uh, Graham Walker. I can't think of his actual handle. I'm going to get it right now for you. Is it Graham Walker 5 or something? Or He's Paul's Graham coach Walker. as well, by the way. Paul obviously doesn't listen to him when he talks about short games. But... No, I'm, uh, Graham Walker 18. So what do you think about the actual move of the Masters to November? Mate, it's going to be cold. Yeah, it'll be freezing. It's going to be different, that. But the end of the year, I mean... Fingers crossed, and I hope, oh, there's obviously bigger subjects at the minute, and I hope this all gets sorted out with, with everyone staying as healthy as they can. But at the end of the year, if it's all passed golf-wise, it's something to look forward to, isn't it? Those three majors Absolutely. are going to be so so tight together. I think in terms of playing majors tournament golf, that's got to suit Tiger more time. Yeah, it just it's just then how packed it is. He doesn't like playing a lot of That's events true. in a in a in a run, does he? You know, because um, it basically you got three majors, a Ryder Cup, Tour Champs, FedEx Finals. Of course, yeah, they'll be everything. That. Everything's around that sort of time. We're going to play a lot of golf in that sort of two three month window. So it'll be interesting to see where Tiger plays, where he doesn't yeah. play, you know, and the other lads as well, see what everyone does scheduling-wise. Um, US Open week before Ryder Cup? I think it is, yeah. You know, so that's... Oh, and then Ryder Cup. It's a lot at of golf, at least, it? at least our team will be over there a week before, adjusting to any jet lag and anything like that yeah. as well. So that'll, that'll help. Yeah. Just means that it's not going to get in the golf course sort of, you know, 10 days before. You're going to have to sort of prepare like you would a normal tournament. How does that affect you, mate, with obviously... That was a, that was a, um, like a genuine goal one. We spoke about it earlier in the year. I think when we were doing Tenerife, we did a similar sort of thing, a question and answer thing about the Masters. And that was one of your goals, wasn't it, to get in that? Obviously, you were you did really well in Abu Dhabi, missed a couple of cuts, and then, all right, in Oman. That was the last event you played, wasn't it, Oman? Yeah, I actually got a little bit of a neck injury from Qatar, which was annoying. Is that uh, what so looking at Qatar? Play. If you can win that, yeah, I would have changed the world and... Yeah, I got to I got to sixty six in the world. I think I dropped back a little bit though after missing a couple of cuts. So I was don't get me wrong, I wasn't like fifty first and knocking on the door, but I wasn't miles away either. So yeah, one good week would have got me close. I think um, someone was tweeting as we were kind of playing that you know if I won in Oman or won in Qatar, I would have I would have got in. But um, obviously. That's now pushed to November, but I, th- I don't know how they're going to do it yet. I think with the Masters, I think it, it would have had to have been in at the point of qualifying originally. Right. I don't think you can play yourself. Oh, saying that, oh, did you save spots up until the final deadline? Because well, they'll still want... A couple of weeks before. They'll still want players to be on form Relative. going into it. And yes. they, have, they normally have the... Is it the Houston Open? That's the week before, and the winner of that gets in it. So, surely the week before the Masters, because they haven't had that tournament. Yeah. I right. think because you normally do top 50 by the end of the year yeah. and then top 50 a couple of weeks before the actual events. So you don't, you don't know what's going to happen. Like USPGA, because I was top 100 about to play, because you'll be top 100 in the world to play that one. Yeah. Um, I, I've already had an email saying if I was in at that point, I'm in the tournament but regardless now. So you're in that so, guaranteed anyway. Yeah, and the same for the Open. If you already qualified for the Open, I know it's been cancelled, but so everyone who's in for 2020 will be in the 2021, even though it's still 149th okay. Open Championship. Yeah, because you, you, were, you were guaranteed two majors this year. Yeah. You were uh, USBJ and the Open. Would yeah. you have gone qualifying for US Open? Yeah, definitely. So that was going to be Monday after Morocco, I think it was. Going to fly yeah. back into Gatwick on a Sunday night and then play... Um, Monday after, but I think even that, I think top 16 in the world gets into that. So again, I was okay. going to be close to that as well. Yeah. The other side of it is, like, I don't know whether travel bans will get lifted and we'll just have a golf tournament and we'll just go and play. You yeah. know, you're not going to have any weeks to knock any rust off or anything like that. You're literally going to go from quarantine pretty much to playing golf. <laughs> Isn't that what you normally do anyway? 
Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I've, I've done more practice. I've done more practice in these last week, couple of weeks than what I would anyway. <laughs> well, at least I'm the new bit an advantage. Yeah, I'm all excited. No about my is up. I'm all excited, mate. But it, 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 it that that side of things is mad because I was listening to Rory did uh, like a similar thing with with Jamie Redknapp the other week, and he was talking about whether he'd been playing. He said he hadn't picked his clubs up. He said he doesn't really like social golf that much. He loves competing, and that's what he misses, but he doesn't really miss playing golf. And that's... Yeah, I can see you know, that. I don't think a lot of those lads play that much. They just get the game ready to compete and then go and compete. Because I know, playing with you, you can't, you can't really create that feeling of playing at all. I mean, it's very difficult. It's like taking penalties and training, but it's you can't create that feeling of tournament when you just go out and play. So you never really play like as good as you can go and play unless you're in yeah. a situation where, you know, I played with you before and you played with someone that, not that it's an ego thing and you've got to impress, but someone that's expecting you to go and play well and you kind of could do with playing well in front of them. I don't know what situation. And you've gone out and shot seven, eight under par. Because mm. there's that little bit of right, I've got to go and play well now. Whereas if you don't have yeah. that, it's I am um, difficult. Enough. I'm a nightmare for club testing. I can't, I'm, I'm horrendous for club testing. I don't know how a club's going to perform until Thursday of a tournament. I, honest to God, like I can work with it on a range Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, I can work with it at home. It's almost pointless because Where? I'll swing it a few miles an hour quicker. I'll deliver a club differently. And I literally will not have a clue where that golf club's going. Where were we? we? We were home. We were home. We were, and you'd, you'd had a driver. You got a new driver. You'd had it for like two or three weeks, maybe. It was and last year. In it. I was it like, it was last year before Abu Dhabi in the winter. I was testing it. We we're in Tenerife. It was mega, absolutely so mega. Got, got to, got to Abu Dhabi, and just hit it so far left all day. Couldn't, couldn't not hit it right. Could, you just take, couldn't. You changed so driver, didn't you? To go back to your old yeah. one. Funny, so isn't it? Evening, finished, went to the range, a different driver, and put that one in the bag. It's so hard to train, to practice, prop, like, effectively, oh, isn't it, when it's like that? Unless, unless you've got that, that adrenaline going, it's, you know, it's really difficult. But apart from when you play against me, like, when I beat you, you yeah. play properly. Yeah, of course, mate. You know, you know you're, you're the big draw, if you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah I, I get that. nervous. I did think that, yeah. How many majors have you played now? Five or six? Yeah. Four opens in the US Open. Four opens? Four opens in the US Open have played, yeah. Our new Steve, Birkdale, Birkdale. Uh, Port Rush last year, yeah. Port Rush, yeah. And the US Open at Shinnecock. And the US Open at Shinnecock, yeah. So going into that being obviously should have been the first major week. What are the when you go into those those events? I mean, you go back to the first one you played, which was Carnoustie in 2010, nine, 2009? No, 2007. 2007. That's still an amateur. That was when I was um, so nervous, and I was playing with Ben Curtis and Aaron Badley. And I walked on the first tee so nervous because Ben Curtis had won a few years before. And I walked onto the first tee yeah. knowing what I was going to say because I was like, I was that nervous. Like, Right, I'm going to walk up, put my hand out, shake his hand, and I put my hand out. I went, hey, Ben, I'm Ben. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Not as bad as you, though, at the yeah, end man. of it. Spanned. Yeah. When I was speaking to somebody else, I was speaking to uh, Bernie Gallagher. Speaking <laughs> to Bernie Gallagher. Having a bit of a conversation with the guy. Well, hold on. He played, right. Just get a bit of context into this. He's gone out, he's playing, he's playing in the open. I'm watching him play in the open. He did a few bad shots and that, so he got bored. So went to the bar, <laughs> went to the bar, had a few of them on the way round, and then watched you maybe last five or six holes, but I had quite a few beers on the way round. So Yeah, I'm speaking to Bernard Gallagher, and I can see Al walking down the road like towards me so I can see him obviously Bernard's got his back to him Al's kind of come to the side of us so we're both looking at him and he's speaking trying to speak to me in a pretty pissed accent and he kind of looks up points at Bernard Gallagher and goes oh my god it's Tony Jacklin (laughs) (laughs) 
Absolute clown. I think you just went, sorry about him. Turn your back <laughs> on me. <laughs> I was off. Uh, that night, I slept. At that point, I had a truck. Remember, I had a truck. I do. And I slept in the truck. Me, Jamie, who's now Paul's caddy, and then went to the open the next day. Felt horrendous. I remember sitting in one of the stands, just like freezing. Same clothes on as the day before. It was horrendous. Well, you guys weren't going to come the second day, but then you decided to. Yeah. So you just literally slept in the truck. You couldn't find anywhere to stay. Same clothes. That <laughs> just must have been horrendous. So what was that like playing in your first? I mean, this is the one. I don't know if everyone remembers it. It was when Harrington won. So Garcia. Was it the one with Garcia? Garcia, yeah, Harrington playoff, um, yeah. And it was Rory's. That was when he first came on. He was an amateur, so Rory, yeah. Paul. Do you know? Can you remember any of the other amateurs that were there? Anyone that's sort of gone? I can't really remember. But Rory I, won I remember the silver medal, played, didn't he? Well, I played a few holes with Rory and Trevor Immelman in practice because I knew Rory. Um, so obviously playing with someone like Trevor Immelman, I was like, wow, it's Trevor, yeah. Trevor Immelman. I've never played a pro tournament before in my life. I've never done anything. I was still an amateur. I was only 22. He wouldn't have won the master. Would he won the masters by then? Uh, yeah. We well, need so. someone that's like proper. Wow, you know what? We, like um, yeah, I'm useless. This, so bad, I'm so bad. So yeah, I got in that first tee, and again, like I said, I, I was that nervous that took to come out of my mouth. But there's a burn fifty yards off the tee. I don't know if you even remember it. Like fr- front edge of the tee, there's a burn, and I always right. think it was getting over the burn. Not even joking. Yeah. Not even joking. It was like playing in the middle of a circus. And it is It is like playing. There's such constant noise. People moving everywhere. And like, you expect, like you go from playing normal tournaments, well, what you call normal amateur tournaments, to then hitting a tee shot where people are crossing at 400 yards. You know, it's just, yeah. a, a, so you're not, you're not seeing so the whole hole you're just seeing this mass of people walking across the fairway and you're hitting golf shots like this is so weird weird trying to pick so stuff yeah it's a compl- oh, that's that's just, when people say always going in it's another game of golf it can't be it's got to be it's, it's just different. not no it may, majors are so different like obviously you get you get more and more used to the more you're playing them in the bigger tournament stuff but then flip side i went to us open a couple of years ago shinnecock and again, that's completely different again because you know how the RNA organises them. So week in, week after week, European tour, you sign in in a certain way. RNA sign is slightly different to that, and then USGA sign in completely different to that. So you you don't know where you're going, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you've got to do with passes and all that sort of stuff. You just kind of turn up and you go, uh, not yeah. got a clue for a, for the first hour or two. Yeah, because again, the sites aren't get to the clubhouse first. He's there. It's get on site through a back entrance into a back car park with a walk over a bridge and then down here and then you're you're into the players' lounge, you're into signing in, where's the first tee, you've got to get a buggy to the range. You've not got a clue where you're going. And you literally just, it's quite overwhelming the first couple of times you do it. Well, I guess you've got all the boys over there that have played it year in, year out. You know exactly what you're doing. So you go from someone that is established European tour know what you're doing, know everyone that's around, it becomes normal, and then you get to that, and you're all of a sudden, you're like a school kid again, and you're yeah. like, uh, what's going on here? Exactly, and it, and like I say, that, that point becomes, it is a little bit overwhelming, you're just like, oh, 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 don't know what to do, and then you're trying to find a range, and you want to go into some balls, or do hit some putts and stuff, but you still have that feeling of, a little bit yeah. of anxiety and stuff, it's hard to settle down. I mean, I, and I, I sort of, relate in a sense of a couple of the things when you go to like Q school and stuff and when you know it's that important trying to treat it as just a normal event just a standard you know go through your same process and everything like that I think it's it's near enough impossible to do because as much as you can go through those the efforts to just sort of physically do the same stuff mentally it's completely different and I think that's half the challenge is almost like recognizing that and saying you know what mentally this is a little bit different and and acknowledge that and then think right how am I going to make that work then how am I going to make that work to my advantage and I know I've done it before and I'm probably learn the opposite way where the first time I've done stuff so I remember the first time I played a Euro Pro event really tough really tough conditions horrendous 
and I was fourth after the first round at Witchwood Park. Didn't play great. Thought you know I'd gone from an amateur, went and played Euro Pro. Didn't play great, and I was like, no, that was okay. And I was fourth after the first day, and I was like, oh my god, and then just went <laughs> terrible, like because you know, like that mentality affected you because all of a sudden yeah. you were like, well, actually, my my, my half decent's good enough at that level, mm. and then for some reason you get fearful of that, and I think. I've done it at Q School. First time I went, did well, made the cut. At Witchwood again, that was Q School, funny yeah. enough, made the cut. And then for the next couple of years, I was terrible. And, and it's just, it's that, I always like expectation, think that's a massive thing. And I think when you go to like the Open or wherever it might be, I know for me, if and when I qualify for the Open, my main, my main mental thing I'd have to deal with is going in and thinking, oh, I just want to make the cut. I just want to be there for the weekend because that, for me, that'd be so difficult to not think about that. Yeah, yeah. But is that something you're thinking of? So you went U.S. Open, and I, I, I obviously I've never been to a U.S. Open and seen the golf courses, but I can't explain how hard it must be. You obviously can. How hard it must be that if those fellas are winning tournaments over par, I cannot even imagine the difficulty of those golf courses because on, on incredibly tough golf courses, say, um, say like Jumeirah golf estates, earth course, when they yeah. play the race to Dubai, some people have won like 20 something under par. And that is yeah. like, honestly, it's the, the one that gets me every here saying it, but it's so hard. Mate, the one that gets me every year is Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi golf club, the way they yeah. set it up every single year. 18 under par wins, 20 yeah. under par wins. And it's like the first tournament out, everyone's a little bit rusty or whatever. Getting around under par, like, oh, thank God for that. Yeah. 20 under par wins, like, it's so hard. The other so one, for those and, US Opens, for well, over par, there's... Well, the other one is Victoria, where we play uh, yeah, Portugal Masters every year. Yeah. That's, that's notoriously one of the lowest scoring golf courses we play. And then everyone goes to play off the back tees and goes, oh, it's really hard, that place. It's like... Yeah, that's, that's the that's the level really. You've got to shoot forty six on the back nine there one year. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, honest, it was a, it was the least enjoyable round of golf I've ever had. It was like rain sideways lashing down. Mm. It was the fourth round of a tournament, and I I, I wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, get me off, get me off. Well, like back back to your question though, like so it, it's it's the setup a lot of the time. Like, well, it, it's a bit of everything really. I, I remember. Uh, like, you look at it and you think, how oh, someone made six or seven? Or, you know what I mean? How oh, someone three. made a big, big number? Wait, well, I, I was watching Jordan Spieth make six on the 11th hole, which is 140 yard par through. Before I'd even teed off, I was like, why am I watching this? What am I doing? Why, why am I even watching this? Why am I just keep, keep my mind fresh and just go and play golf? But you get round to, I think it was 13 or 14, it was 530 yard par four. Five it's just. Five thirty par four, yeah, and not a hay. short par five, is it? No, 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 no. But it's hay off the tee as well. Like it's literally fairway or hay. So you miss the tee shot. Probably lose a ball if you miss the tee shot. It's that tough. So you miss the tee shot. You go back. You play three. You miss that tee shot. Find it. Hack it out for five. You then you've got three wood because it's into wind and rain. You miss that into the hay. All of a sudden you, you can make ten up. without. Oh, don't get me wrong, and I, and, I, and I genuinely mean this. It goes fairway, semi-rough, hay, like and it's lob wedge job. Yeah, if you find it, <sighs> it's just ridiculous. So we back back to a story there actually. So fifteen was it fifteen? Fifteen was this two thousand eighteen? Yeah. So fifteen's got a back ridge at about twenty two on. And me and Jay were uh, were. We're battling a little bit on Friday. We're not too far off making the cut, but we need something to happen. Um, and the flag was 20, 21 on. I think it was 21 on. And it, I remember I remember having it in a really good, solid shot in. It's like 10 foot under the hole. And literally me and Jay are looking at this putt, and we've, we both said, look, I've got to front door this from 10 foot, like fully last roll, drop it in. Because if I miss... I'm, this is off that bag slope and it's degreened. Yeah. Now, when I say degreened, it goes 
it's another 30, it's another 10 paces, so it's 32 long or whatever. And then it keeps running, like, because it's like almost linked scratch down another 40 yards. So you've got a 40, if, if I knock this three foot pass, I've got 40 yard pitch coming back. And that was at 21 on. Oh. We looked at the pins. We missed the cup. We looked at the pins on a Saturday. This is the day that everyone said they lost the golf course. That flag was like 25 on. It was on the slope. So I don't remember if you remember Polter almost rolling up stiff and like last roll it going and then just going down the green. And then you've got a horrendous pitch where you could be there all day. Yeah, you could be there all day. All day. Like par three seventh uh, Shinnecock. All you can do there basically is either hit it in the left trap or you hit it long. So it's par three. But the expectation is that you have to get up and down to make three. That's crazy, isn't it? That, it that, that's the expectation. Is like a good crazy. score. You know, a good solid score. You should hit it somewhere in the vicinity and then you have to get up and down to make three. Crazy. It's basically a par two from a bunker or a chip. Yeah, that's good. That is <laughs> mad, isn't it? Playing a par three to make bogey. I mean... Well, no, well, you, you've got to get up and down to make three. It's, it's what it's saying. That's all they do. They just test you from... Well, this hole, we're going to test you from a 20-yard chip. This hole... We're going to test if you can two put from 40 foot because that's as close as you can hit it. It's just the way it is. So what's the feeling then? I mean, this is... This is and but that's of, US Open. That's different to the Masters. Yeah. I mean... I think. I've never played one. Well, fingers crossed you will. But th- this, is, this is quite interesting for me, this. But what's the feeling of being... I mean, your best finish in a major 19th at... Open, Open? yeah. Back there, yeah. So what's the feeling that, I mean, I know that's not necessarily like properly in the mix to win, but what, what's, the, what's the feeling like rocking up last day knowing, you know, you've got a chance of have a really good finish in the open air and, you, you put, I mean, you were playing with Phil Nicholson in the last round and what's that, what's the difference in that? Does that, you thinking, wow, I'm playing with Phil Nicholson or you going into that and going, right, I'm just playing the last round of a tournament? Because I've spoke to you before about this when you were playing, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know, uh, and I'm sure people can relate. Even if I've got an average round going and I get on the 18th tee, I still feel like a little bit nervous. And that's me being focused on score and something I need to change. Yeah. But I spoke to you about the race to Dubai and you were playing Jamira Golf Estates just the last year in November, just gone. And you, you finished maybe 15th or something like that, did you there? Yeah, uh, sure, right? But you shot about 14, 12, 14, 14, but you you shot about 77 or something on the first day. Yeah, 75, or you were you were way down there. You were like pretty much bottom leaderboard after round one. And I think your last three rounds, you were pretty much top for the last three rounds. Yeah, yeah. But you're going on that last hole and you're on that team. There's a minging like that hazard that goes all the way up the middle of the fairway. All it's disgusting. But you're, I spoke to you, and you're on that team. I said, are you nervous in that situation? Fourth round, you're on that hole. Obviously, there's a lot of money on it, depending on what score you get on that hole. I said, are you nervous? And you said, no, not, not, not in the slightest. I'm like, how can, that, how can that be? How can you get that feeling where you are just not nervous? Are you not aware of what score you're shooting or where you are? Or are Yeah, you- a bit of that. Also, it's going to sound really funny now. There's, I've just stopped caring. Right. That, that sounds weird, and it's not that I'm, I was thinking of you this before, it's, care, it's carefree, it's not careless, it's not, yeah, yeah. The, the routine's still very strong and everything, I just, I don't really give, maybe we've got a bleep machine, I don't really give a shit about outcome. Yeah. I just, it, especially long game, I think because I'm a very strong long game, I, I literally, a bad golf shot, I can just wipe off as, it's just it's just a bad golf swing. That, that's it. I don't go any in any more depth other than just a bad golf swing onto the next one. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a lack of focus. It's brushed off as a. It's not a oh 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 that felt a bit here or a bit there. I need to do this that and the other one. A bit nervous on the next one. And it's just a bad golf shot. So how does that change when you were uh, when you in the playoff say in Sweden within your first event? Mm-hmm. What how does that change when you're stood over a ball? on that tee, knowing if you hit a bad shot, it's over. Do you know that? It's over. It's or over. Not? Same feeling? Yeah, it's over. It doesn't matter. It sounds daft. Yeah, yeah. It's like, look, it, being nervous and all that sort of stuff doesn't make you hit bad golf shots. Thinking about being nervous does. Thinking about the outcome, which is making you nervous, make, can make you hit bad golf shots. But 
yeah. nervous physically bad, being really nervous idiots. being nervous and having the adrenaline going through that that doesn't make you hit by a golf shot yeah that's yeah. that's one of the massive things that it? it's 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 out it's focused on outcome that's the the major issue you use it in the wrong way yeah it's yeah, kind of a lot yeah. of the work that i'm doing at the minute but there's no outcome hitting it into my net at the moment but <laughs> that's good though get used to that yeah, yeah, that yeah. Of course. True. That's where I feel it's good, and you've got to go with that feeling, taking it on. You know, you you get your start line strong, like literally starting the ball in the same place on your net all the time. Draw a little dot on it, draw a line, do whatever, and yeah. then just try and hit that dot. You know, it's six foot in front of you. You get on a golf course, and you know that then club and path are relatively in the right place. If the ball's spinning off line from there, then you've obviously got a bit of a face issue or something like that. You know, yeah. it's you can you can deal with that you know the body's working well if you can just keep hitting that same start line spot right on to on to the next thing talking about how good players deal with stuff because i guess that's what the best players have always done tiger's probably the best at that i've mentioned his name quite a bit but Jack so you played the major bad. you played a lot of tournaments now you played a lot of tournaments now and are you putting your glove back on yeah i was going to <laughs> I keep rubbing my chin but i need to get my sponsors in go on I thought it'd be a decent one to go on to. Well, I'll start actually. Who the best player you played with? And obviously, I'm not going to say you because it's not. So, <laughs> am I? <laughs> I'm going to say you because I'll be lying. So, but I remember, and this is a level of confidence. And it's not, it wasn't in anything, but we went to Tenerife. This was years ago. This was, um, I don't know how many years ago, maybe like seven, eight years ago, I guess. Me, you, Danny Willett, and we were on, I remember the seventh at Amarillo, and my old man was playing, you know, the par five? Yeah. Me, you, Danny, old seventh, old, man. old seventh. Oh, yeah, it's not the seventh anymore, is it? Is that the tenth now? Mm-hmm. So, anyway, we were playing, me, you, Danny, and my old man, and I remember, it was the first time my dad had met Dan, and he was, we got on that old, and Dan had maybe like 275-ish in, and he said to me, Dad, he said, the R Razor, he said, drive off the deck. He goes, all right, okay. He goes, I'm going to hit a little fade off the left edge of the green, middle of the green, drive off the deck. Hits the shot, pitches middle of the green. And I was like, fair play, that's a joke, really, just to call it. And then my dad was loving life, obviously, like, well, happy with it. So he goes, the R Razor, I'll hit a little draw, throws another ball down, driver again off the deck. And, it, and I'm such a hard shot to hit a little draw with driver off the deck, middle of the green again. And I was like, it's not the fact that he he could hit those shots because they're hard enough to hit, but it's the fact that he could call it with the risk of looking like a complete knob if he, <laughs> you know what I mean, if he didn't hit it properly. <laughs> the level of confidence to do that is, I mean, he, oh, and I don't know, obviously to, you've got to be an unbelievable golfer to go and win the Masters like he did and win the tournaments he's done. And you've spent a lot of time playing with Danny, haven't you? You know how good he yeah. is. Who's the who's the best player you've ever played with? So bearing in mind you've played European Tour for you probably forgot quite a few of them for 10, 11, 12 years and made <laughs> who's the best. There's a couple of stand out. I've always said about um playing with Ernie Els at Wentworth. Um when was that? Oh eight, oh nine, something like that. Uh, and he just started every single approach shot in the middle of the green and then either moved it left to right or right to left at flags. It was just mind-boggling, like just to have that level of control. Yeah. Every single golf shot started in the middle of the green and then just moved and just fell one way towards the flag. It's just so impressive. But taking on from shot shape, and I played nine holes with Bubba Watson in um, US Open. In practice round, and he was just a joke, absolute really? joke. Don't know how he hasn't won more than what he's won. He is unbelievable. What like is it that extreme? Like it looks on TV, it's that extreme. Yeah, yeah. Every every single goal shot is being moved, but it's being moved for a reason. It's not just it's not just for the sake of doing it. it it's to get at flags you just can't get at right. unless you do what he does. He's Unbelievable. Best player you've ever played with Bubba then? I think so, yeah. Like, from <sighs> Being impressed why standing back yeah. and oh my God. Because I, I guess I there's think, not I many think... players that you do that with and playing for so Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You, 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 you play with Rory 
and it just comes off like a missile. You know, Brooks hits it well. What an understatement that is. Brooks hits it well. <laughs> <laughs> Decent, like, yeah. Yeah. Westwood middles it now and again. Um, <laughs> but I think because, like, you just expect Rory to middle it every time and it come off like a bullet and everything else. I think you you don't expect that level of skill and control from someone, yeah. not in today's game. Yeah. You don't expect someone to be able to move the ball around as much as Bubba does with the level of control he moves the ball around. I think it, if, I was to, if I was telling kids now growing up, I think play golf like that, like just do it because that's just developing your way to play good, your skills no, and you're not strong at. Just do that. You're not going to play sure. like that tournaments all the time, but just develop your golf like that. Have fun with it. Because that's fun. If you went out and played and we said, right, hmm. we should do this actually. We've got to play nine holes and every shot we hit, we've got, uh, if, as long as you can. Well, we didn't work shot, shot, didn't we? Shot, you've got to move it 20 yards. We did, we did worse shot, didn't we, where we were hitting funny cuts and yeah. fades and draws yeah. and stuff into Horrible. holes that don't suit. We've done that. Um, but, yeah, something like that. Like, the other side of it, if you can move it both ways quite a lot, like equal both sides, it shows that your actual golf swing's in quite a neutral place to be able to do that. Yeah. You know, Sky's were hitting quite a heavy draw that just can't hit fade at all. So if you can hit, hit it both ways, it, it's a nice way to practice. Sometimes to keep your, your golf swing in a kind of neutral place. I guess McDowell's always been like that, and he always strong drawer of the ball, but he's not yeah. really in it the other way. And suits some and some don't. And you just got, yeah, yeah. You, if you're gonna hit, meet it one way, you've got to be absolutely exceptional in it that way, haven't you? You know, it's not like all, all, all one way does is takes a side of the golf course out of play. Yeah. So if you know you're not going to miss it one side of a flag or something, you can be very aggressive into some flags and just have to hit it into the middle of the green above us, but you know that and you can take advantage of tight flags where other people can't because that suits your shape where you can't get it the other flags but people make a lot of money out of hitting it one way well we did I, this is where I, I there's certain things you pick up over time and a couple of things that I've got when we did that bunker work maybe mate must be five six years ago and mm. We spent 40 minutes in the bunker. My bunker play was terrible. I mean, I have got like some sh like balls cut in half because I was I was terrible at bunkers. I really was terrible at bunkers. And we spent 40 minutes in the trap and it went against everything that I ever thought you had to do out of a bunker. Hmm. Completely changed my method of teaching bunker shots and everything because my bunker play now is like probably one of the strongest points. Certainly the strike wise and how to strike it and what you were what we went yeah. through that day literally 40 minutes yeah but it's so extreme opposite of what you do and that's where the lads because there's so many points so many parts and i am probably one of the worst for this is getting obsessed with a certain part of the game but the top lads they are good at it's not much they're not good at even the stuff they're average at unless they're unbelievable t to green kind of like westwood was for years because he wasn't great Putter and chipper, but he was like obscenely good tee to green. It, it's funny that you say he wasn't a good putter or chipper, but yeah. it's just going to hit it Relative. so close Relative, all the yeah. time. Yeah. So you'd always, and, he, and all he'd do is, you know, probably hold his percentage share. You know, he'd hold, I, I don't know what, I can't remember stats off the top of my head, but 50% from nine foot. Yeah. So you'd see him hold one, miss one, hold. Couple, you've seen him miss a lot of 12, 10, 9 footers because he hits it there so often. But like 15 foot, you're only going to hold one in four. He would have been one of my shouts for the for Masters this year. Westwood, so been, Westwood would have been one of my shouts for the Masters this year. Well, he's playing good. And he's been good at, at the Masters before. Mm. Loads of times. He would have been yeah. one of my shouts. So regards to everything this year, mate, we're talking about Q School and stuff and what's going to happen there because I mean, that's a big thing for European Tour, isn't it? You've got 2,000, is it at least 2,000 lads paying 1,800 quid. It's a lot play, of income for the tour. Q School, it's a lot. That funds a lot of the season, doesn't it? So I'd it's assume that will still happen. But what do you think will happen with the tour like this year? Have you got any idea of what's going to be going on? Like, well... We've we've got a reschedule. We've got to reschedule now because of um, because the majors have moved and FedEx and stuff have moved. Yeah. So now, if I had I got this, I had a little look 
the other day. Effectively, Dubai is three days after, I want to say the Masters. Mm -hmm. So, which clashes, Masters now clashes with Nedbank. Yeah. It's we, 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 stuff's going to have our final series is going to have to get through. With that does it? Yeah, so it goes Nedbank, Dubai, and Masters is week of Nedbank. So, so it's not as simple. Like a few people have been like, "Oh, the Europeans are unreleased or anything yet?" Well, it's not that easy, you know. Yeah. We've got to fit in with Ryder Cup majors, WGCs, yeah, and that sort of stuff. I I'll be honest, mate. I have no idea. It's hard for me to even speculate what's going to happen. The chances but, are, as well, when it comes around, you're going to, I don't mean this to sound putting pressure on, but players are going to have to hit the ground running because there's not going to be that many events. No, I don't. I, the only thing is, obviously, we've got a minimum tournament obligation, both oh, from yeah. sponsors and from, to actually keep your money on European tours. So you've got to pay, play a minimum number of tournaments for your money to count on the money list. So okay. if lads aren't technically hitting that, what happens there? They get your sponsors in on a video, on a YouTube video. Yeah, that's what you're trying to do, isn't it? <laughs> the obvious answer to that, isn't it? <laughs> like, just to finish this off, because we've been on for quite yeah. a while now, this has gone on. But to finish it off, Masters Week, what is your favourite Masters moment that you can remember? I, without doubt, that like Tiger win last year. Yeah, what the actual win, like a specific yeah. moment. Well, you know, you know, I've got a couple, and again, a bang on about him, like a married to, but obviously Danny winning. Yeah. You know, he's someone I've grown up with. He's been a very close and mate. One of your mates missing. with the Masters, that's going to be one of your Yeah, so I mean, it's like moments. one of my actual mates. Mm. It's like you winning the Masters. Yeah. And I like him more than you. That's all right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, the shot Danny into 16. Similar hair, that's why. Yeah. Um, the shot Danny into 60 to make and then hold the putt for two. I think that moment was up there for me. But just, I, I think someone actually tweeted it. Tiger just knocking a knocking putt in on the last and then walking to the clubhouse yeah. with his son. I think everything else that happened on a golf course is one thing, but that, for me, encapsulates modern golf. Yeah, I Tiger watched Woods this morning. And everything that's that's happened. Really awesome. You know, everything's happened with Tiger being on the scene. Yeah. I think you think about his life where he's gone to, you know, with the bits that's fallen down, uh, the the rise back to glory, all that sort of stuff. You know, to winning Tour Champs, winning one Tour Champs is amazing. You yeah. saw almost a biblical scene of Tiger walking through yeah. the crowd because again, it's always a little bit like people are like, oh, there's only 30 playing it. It's not. But yeah, that, that's one the thing. But then to go and win the Masters in yeah. in that way against you know Francesco Molinari is possibly one of the hottest players in the world at that point. Yeah, flying. Yeah, in the final group. Yeah, you know it's not like he's. It was. I don't know. Just you think about that actual round, but it, it, it was the after bit. It was it was the walking from holding the putt, walking to the to the clubhouse with everyone right. still cheering him with his son. That, that's one of the most pinnacle moments in sport for me. Mine's a bit different, man. I mean, mine is Tiger, but mine is, and it's just a specific moment. And it's not like, I don't know why, but the shot into 16 that Tiger hit last year, and then yeah. he held the putt. I remember thinking, that was the moment I thought, oh my God, Tiger's going to win the Masters. And I was honestly, I do feel like that nervous when I watch. I'm like, uh, maybe that's part of my thing. I get so nervous watching stuff like that. Just like you're off your head. Honestly, he's got four footer. So I'm thinking, oh my god, what if he suddenly gets the yips here? <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, I, I I I get nervous watching sometimes. I I do, I do. I just love him, mate. I just love him that much. I can tell. I can feel it from you. I can feel it. Got his hoodie and everything. I'm a bit gutted it's not on, but obviously, if we get to watch it. In November, then amazing, but yeah, yeah, well, something to look forward to anyway, mate. And hopefully, hopefully, some way or another, you can get there. Yeah, we'll see. If it's not this season, maybe next season, just have to play it by ear, see what happens. Yeah, just come out playing good, then you never know what's going to happen, do you? It'd be good, it'd be good because we never had, we never had as professional golf, like, we never played any tournaments. 
because you went together, home together. straight away and then went straight to the Challenge Tour and straight on European Tour. Mm. We never had that's part of one of the things, like one of the big things. If I qualify for the Open, like how good that would be. Yeah, yeah. You've always said, haven't you? Just if I could get on tour for a year, man, I'd love it. I'd, 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 I'd love, I'd love to have have you around for a year or so. Yeah, it'd be amazing. Well, that's the plan, mate. That's right. I'm going to carry on hitting balls in my net now. Or to hit a few chips in the garden. That's it. First episode down the line done. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit different. It's something we're going to try and do quite regular. Maybe get a few different guests on, mix it up a little bit. But like I said at the start, if there's anything you want us to talk about, any subjects you want us to cover, leave a comment below and we'll see if we can get it into the series. If you could subscribe, if you haven't already, that would be brilliant. So I'll see you next Tuesday. Let's just say when I say see you next Tuesday, it means Tuesday that's coming. So I'll see you next Tuesday. And I'll see you down the line. Hey, see you down the line. Get it? In your life, have you seen anything like that? On about the fifth attempt.